blue skies in the summer, the evening light at dusk, birds out at sea. What do these colours feel like? There's warm tones, October sunsets, the street lights, a candlelit meal. What do they feel like? When we're colour grading an image, these are the kind of creative choices we can make by simply moving a slider to tweak the exposure or to change the contrast, the colour temperature, the saturation. But how much can we really change things with colour grading? Using the Film Convert plugin, we can grade this shot as if it were a daylight scene. Plenty of light and bright colours. But if we think about what a night scene really looks like, we might try darkening the image because we'd expect some shadows. Then we might increase the contrast and cool off the temperature simply because we're going for realism. Now, if we're shooting something with a retro style, that might call for us to take a typical grade like this and bump the contrast way down. After dropping the exposure slightly, increasing the saturation, and sending the tint a bit towards magenta, we've now got something with a kind of 80s film stock vibe, which could work for the retro feel. So let's look at this shot from Shawshank. Golden colors, yes, but that's not just a color grading preset. The light on set is behind the actors, mimicking a sunset, so that motivates the golden tones. Beyond that, of course, is the emotion of the scene. A brief moment where these prisoners get to feel like free men, where they're able to relax and have a drink after a tough day. The music, the actors' performances, the lighting, it all links in to create this golden mood. So we start with the big strokes, the overall look. But after that, we can refine, working on the details. Bringing down the midtones in the corners with a vignette can help root our eyes to the important parts of the frame. Beyond that, there are power windows, which allow us to get specific with our grading, drawing attention to or from certain parts of the frame. As any artist knows, less is often more, so we've got to be careful that we don't go overboard with these. Now, it may be clear at this stage that I tend to grade things pretty dark and with a fair amount of contrast, but that doesn't mean that you need to. How do we decide when to follow a realistic look? and when to use artistic license to stray from reality. What counts as too dark? What counts as too bright? And how much is too much contrast? When is less more? And when is more actually more? There's only one answer to all of those questions, and it's very simple. It's up to you. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.